Hey guys, welcome back. Thanks for joining me. So this is the process of replacing a thermostat on a Jeep Wrangler YJ. I'm gonna cover how to do that and some of the struggles and problems you can run into. But now we're gonna be doing the thermostat on my Project 92 YJ here, but same engine, inline six, thermostat is the same. Four cylinder, it's the same process as well. The very first thing we need to do, thermostats down here, we have to drain the radiator fluid down below the level of the thermostat. A little air in up top here. It'll just help it drain faster. And if at all possible, save your old fluid. Well, not if it's old fluid. If it's still good, it's not too old, it's not dirty, reuse it. And of course, you also notice my shop cat's not around right now because this stuff will kill her. So, definitely don't want that. You know how uh, radiator fluid kills? It causes uh, renal failure. Kidney failure. Interesting little factoid. So at this point, I'm proceeding to drain all of the radiator fluid because this is actually part of a bigger project where I'm gonna be removing the engine on this vehicle. So if you're just doing the thermostat, it's not required for you to drain all the fluid. Just get down below that thermostat housing. All right, now that we've got the coolant all drained, we can go ahead and remove the hoses off the uh, this one here goes to the heater core. This one comes over to the radiator, obviously. And then we can start taking the bolts off to the uh, thermostat housing. Pretty tiny left in this here, right? I'm getting weak. And yep, here I run into the classic issue with these old Wranglers. You got that thermostat housing that's been on there for years, maybe a decade or two. And these bolts have been sitting in there rusting and corroding. They slowly fuse to that housing and you end up breaking them off. Very common with these old thermostats. So this one, I end up breaking it, as you'll see here in a second. I have another video on what I do to get that thermostat housing off after that bolt has been broken off in there. You can use some PB blaster heat, uh, some friction or impact wrench. Uh, I can't really get an impact wrench on there. <clears throat> That'd be kind of hard. But there are some methods of things you can try, but most likely you're gonna end up breaking the bolt if you end up putting a pry bar on there like I had to. Check out that other video on what I did when I busted the bolt off on this. I don't think it's stripping. Or maybe it is. This is supposed to be a particularly long one in the top up here. And yeah, I don't know, it was just fused in there. I had to put so much torque on it. Yeah, I probably should use some PB blaster or something. Hopefully I have a little better luck with this one. Oh yeah, this one's coming off easy.
So I'm just working again this radiator, radiator. This is not your radiator, this is your radiator. This would be your thermostat housing. Okay. <clears throat> so I'm just working at getting this uh, thermostat housing off of here without damaging the head. Hit him with a little bit of PB blast. I can't get the thermostat housing off. The thermostat housing here itself is not threaded. The threads start actually in the head here. So, because if there were threads in the thermostat housing here itself, it wouldn't suck up tight against the head there. So, Oh, well, there we go. No wonder that wouldn't come out completely rusted out. Uh, our gasket here and the thermostat. Kind of beat that up a little bit. It's okay. So yeah, in hindsight, I don't think it would have mattered how much PB Blaster I put on this thing. It wasn't coming off. It was just completely rusted out, so I needed new bolts anyways. All the PB Blaster in the world wouldn't have gotten it out. So now obviously here's the old bolts and here's our new ones. I recommend getting some good new uh, grade 8 bolts uh, as these ones, yeah, you're just, you're gonna end up breaking them. These are what, this one is uh, 15 16 uh, 18 by 3 quarters of an inch and this is 15 16 18 and 2 and a quarter inches. Alright next we're gonna clean up the gasket surface and we're gonna start by shoving a rag into the hole to prevent debris from falling down inside the engine. Hello. And you want to make sure your rags not too big and it won't fit in the hole. A smaller rag. You just want to make sure you get off all the old gasket uh, and RTV. <clears throat> the cleaner you have this, the better. I'm going to be careful not to gouge it and scratch it up too much. But you do want it nice and clean so that uh, you get a good, nice, good seal. And I've got a real good video on uh, cleaning gasket surfaces on iron, I guess this is cast iron, on cast iron heads like this. Uh, I'll be sure to include a link to that, put a card or something in here. And I'm removing the idler pulley here, and I have the accessory belt out of the way too. And a lot of that is because uh, I'm going to be actually taking this engine out. You don't have to remove the accessory belt or this idler pulley or any of this stuff to do the thermostat. I'm doing this to make it a little bit easier to film so you guys can have a little better shot at what I'm doing. And you really want to spend some extra time on this gasket surface. You want it really clean. Nothing more frustrating than doing all this work, putting your new thermostat in and it leaks. Let's hit it with a little brake cleaner. All right, that ought to do. Here I've got the uh, new thermostat, gasket, new housing, and some RTV. You want to buy yourself a real good gasket. This is a Felpro gasket because nothing's more frustrating. I think I mentioned earlier, you do this whole job and then you develop a little leak. It's like, oh, you're doing the whole thing over again. So spend like a dollar more, get a good Felpro gasket. Uh, I'll link all this stuff in the description below of where you can find it and what I used. Also, the uh, new thermostat housing, I think this was like, what, 10, 12 bucks or something like that. Now we're going to take, we're going to put just a little bit on the inside edge here. The spring side is the side that goes towards the engine, right? There we go, just a little bit on this edge right here. Does not take much. 
and it doesn't even have to be all the way around it. The reason we're doing that, sorry this isn't the prettiest job, it's kind of hard to do and film because I'm looking in a window. <laughs> so we're going to take that and we're going to put it in place and then we're just going to leave it there. We're going to let that RTV set. So why are we going to do that? Why are we going to put it on there and let it set for an hour? It's like just throw the thermostat housing on there and you're good to go. Well, well a lot of people have trouble with this uh, thermostat slipping out of place when you go uh, monkeying around with your housing here. Yeah, let's use the old one. So when you go monkeying around with your new housing trying to put it in place, you end up bumping that thermostat and it'll fall down and the lip of it will just come over the edge. The lip of it will just come over the edge here. Let me, here we go. <clears throat> so the lip of it will come out of that groove and come over the edge and get down in here and it'll interfere with your seal. Definitely don't want any seal issues. So my recommendation Put a little bit of, do like we did there, put a little tape on it, just hold it in place, leave it for an hour. Go have some lunch, have a beer, I don't know, take a break, just let it be. Now that the RTV has got that thermostat set in place, we're going to take some more RTV, put it on our thermostat housing here, around all the edges. It doesn't take a whole lot of RTV, just enough to cover all the surfaces. And you want these bolts just finger tight right now. If I can get my fingers on it. Ugh. Or just snug, just so you start to see RTV kind of squish out. You don't want to torque it quite yet. So we're going to let that RTV set up for a while. What you don't want to do is you don't want to go tightening it down, torquing it everything before that RTV has had a chance to set because what you'll do is you'll end up just squishing it all out and not really have a good seal. So let's take a break. Alright that's had a chance to dry so now we can torque it to 156 inch pounds. Inch pounds, doesn't have to be very tight. There we go. And when you go to put your sensor back into your thermostat housing here, just threads right in there. <clears throat> but be sure to give it a little wrapping with some Teflon tape so you don't want it leaking out this sensor. Not too much, just a wrap or two is enough. And we're just going to hook all of our hoses back up and once that RTV has had a good amount of time to cure, when you're filling your system back up you want to get as much air out as possible. So this top hose here, going to your heater core, go ahead and take a little funnel, fill it up as much as you can, then drop it back down on real quick and hook it up to your thermostat housing there. So as you're burping the air out of the system, go ahead and give this top hose here a squeeze as you continue to top it off. Bubbles will be coming out of the radiator on the top here. Just keep adding fluid as they keep coming. Go ahead and start the vehicle up and you're going to let the engine warm up. And as it warms up, you're going to keep topping it off, keep adding a little bit of fluid. Then when that thermostat reaches that temperature of 195 degrees and opens up, it's going to start to bring more fluid in. So you're going to have to keep topping it off. Top off your uh, overflow reservoir and you should be good to go. Probably hit it with some PB bot. Ugh. And, you were, ugh. and you really want to spend some extra time on this. I can hear me when I do that. So we're going to let that RTV set up because, because because it needs to. And on your housing here, don't forget to take your little plug out there and hook your new little sensor in. 
and the sub <coughs> the air out. Gip, 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 gip. Uh, if you're new to the channel, consider subscribing. I'd love to have you follow along as I rebuild this old YJ. And a simple little shop tip, if your uh, thermostat has a little hole at the top of it, a little bleeder hole, that's for air to come out of the system to help air get out. Make sure that that little hole is at the very top when you install it into your vehicle. If it doesn't have a hole, you can just drill your own with just a real small drill bit. Drill a little hole right at the top. It's not going to interfere with the function of the thermostat at all, and it'll help allow that air to pass through. So you can modify this. Thanks for watching, and have a good day.